Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. I'm glad that you joined us today. We're going to have a great show. Our show will have guest Dr. Matt Meisner, and we're going to talk about laminitis in beef cattle and dairy cattle. And we're going to talk about how that develops, what are some of the causes, and how we're going to treat and prevent it. Thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to having a great show. We're cow-calf producers from Northeast Colorado. We run about 300 commercial cows and calves and uh, sell them at the sale barn in October. Since we've been given multi-min, our reproduction rate is about 95%, which is pretty good for grassland, and we run bulls, and we do not AI. That means an extra 15 calves at sale time. We've been using the multi-min product for three years. We are really happy with it and recommend it to anybody in this business. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Matt, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Folks, this is Dr. Matt Meisner, and Dr. Meisner is an associate clinical professor here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. He is boarded in internal medicine, and you know, you do a lot of things here at school. <laughs> Teach, <laughs> research, clinics. Yeah, What's lot, your favorite part? A lot of clinics, and actually probably one of my favorite things is uh, trying to figure out lame problems in cattle, various ones. And so that's kind of kind of the thing that we have here as a, as, a, as a service that we provide and try to do a really good job of that. It's a pretty common problem all the way around. Sure. And today we're going to talk about laminitis, which, you know, a lot of people, some people know what it means. A lot of people have probably seen it and didn't know that's what it was. I think that, you know, I think what happens a lot of times, is try to get simplified. It's such, it's such a, a, more of a syndrome than anything and a uh, um, bunch of different causes. And I think a lot of horse people recognize it really more commonly than in, than in cattle, but we see it in various forms. And uh, it's a really complex problem and, and uh, it's things that make careers out of researchers for you know decades. And so um, it's, it's really technical, but I figure we can try to make some light of it here today and, and, uh, and cause, talk about it in cattle. Well, I think that it is, it's something that you know has made the news, whether we're talking about beta agonists or we're talking about dairies or different things, lots of cattle get laminitis. And so let's just start out by talking about what it is. Well, I brought a, a prop here. It was actually a dog rawhide chew <laughs> <laughs> um, that I found some pathology in after my wife brought it and I stole it from the dog. But what we're talking about, <laughs> we got laminitis, is we're actually talking about the area right between the coffin bone and the hoof wall, uh, the capsule down here. And that all is suspended and it's a really um, technical bunch of physiology that goes on there, blood flow and whatnot. And when we get laminitis, not necessarily inflammation, but that blood flow gets disrupted and, and uh, then we start seeing growth defects like this hoof wall here, um, stress <laughs> rings. Hold that thing up here just a little bit. I'll hold it for you and you can point. But St Stress rings and all kinds. So you can see how this toe has grown abnormally and something went on to, with this foot, with this, uh, with this bovine here and we get we can see that that hoof is certainly not healthy and uh, and it's long it's really long and overgrown in turn and so suspect a laminitis or a disruption of that of that uh, layer and the best way to kind of describe that the most commonly is to think of velcro so velcro basically keeps this hoof wall onto that bone um, but it's all a whole network of blood flow and uh, metabolic things that, that, that keep that there. So, so when the Velcro gets disrupted, disrupted either, then this bone floats inside that hoof. Correct, yep. You get swelling and disruption of that blood So flow. laminitis, the lamina is that Velcro. Correct. And then itis, something it wrong with it. It says something wrong with it because it's really actually not inflammation all the time, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's certainly abnormal tissue there. Cool, well, it's time for us to take a break. So we'll leave you for a minute, but when we come back, we're going to continue talking about laminitis, some of the things that you can do to uh, 
see the anatomy and the clinical signs, you're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad that you joined us. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. It takes vision, dedication, hard work. It takes knowing who you can trust. At Zinpro Corporation, we have more industry-endorsed research behind our trace minerals than any other company. Proof that our patented performance minerals help improve overall animal health and performance. Lots of companies make claims. At Zinpro, we generate results. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300LA is the practical choice for your herd. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Getting ready to work cattle for pre-breeding and calf vaccinations? There's no better time to use a safe, modified live virus vaccine to prevent BRD. Titanium provides the correct equation for BRD with its excellent safety profile and a strong response and long duration of immunity. Ask your veterinarian about modified live virus vaccines and the eight convenient combinations of titanium for the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with my guest, Dr. Matt Meisner, who is an associate clinical professor in the Veterinary Health Center here at Kansas State University. And the Veterinary Health Center is really our hospital, the veterinary hospital here. And yep. So you see cases from all over the place, local cases, referred cases. Sure, and uh, we see, like I sometimes have cattle drive clear from Montana. <laughs> so um, it's kind of an interesting uh, job, and I really enjoy it. And uh, Well, first of all, we're lucky to have you at K-State, and to have the type of reference that you are and, and bovine practitioner here for, for the state of Kansas, and I uh, appreciate what you do. But we're talking about laminitis, and let's talk about what are some of the clinical signs you'll see. Some of the clinical things, everybody thinks of the acute form of laminitis where they're really painful, really sore. Um, cattle you'll see down on their front legs walking on their knees or crawlers, sometimes they're called. And that's uh, the acute form is things we think of in horses where they're acutely, severely sore from that inflammation in that lamina or swelling in that lamina. Something hurts. Um, then in the other side, we see subacute forms where they're talked about in dairies um, where we've got something that's smoldering and they're walking on eggshells. And they're, they're not severely sore, but they're sort of dancing along, shifting back and forth. And then we even have chronic or uh, subclinical forms where we don't recognize a lameness, but we recognize the laminitis or laminar disruption um, when we're looking at their feet. And so we see widening of, of areas of the foot or we see stress rings in the hoof wall. Um, so those would be clinical things that we see. The subclinical forms also affect uh, 
uh, production parameters, you know, milk production, feed consumption, growth rates, uh, those kind of things. So those might be the clinical things that we're seeing. Some of those uh, chronic ones, you know, that always bring back memories from as a kid or even now is the old Shetland pony and or the cow that gets the elf shoe looking right. like uh, uh, growth <laughs> of the hoof, you know, and, and so those are some of those chronic founder or laminitis issues that keep keep occurring. Sure, we only just talk about another term right there. Founder would be something that some of the folks might recognize more commonly than laminitis, and uh, that's what we see is hoof growth defects, and that's all disruption of that connection on the bone, and so. Those might be the clinical things that we recognize in various forms, and then uh, then we kind of get into uh, some of the causes of those. Yeah, what are some of the causes of those? In cattle, probably one of the more common things is an acidosis or a rumen acidosis. So a feed-induced um, sudden onset, sudden change in, in feed, proteins to carbs, those would be the big thing there. Um, we get some sort of lactate productions. Uh, so feed would probably be one of the more common things that we see. Uh, for acute ones, and then we get into just micronutrients, you know, so some of the <clears throat> the, the minerals uh, can lead to more of the chronic forms that we'd see. Hormonal things even, you know, so we see a lot of it um, whenever we get down to uh, calving time, you know, so they think there's some hormonal influences. So a bunch of different metabolic, infectious, inflammatory things can set up a disruption in that blood flow. Well, it's time for us to go to a break. <clears throat> we now know the clinical signs and, and what we're going to be looking for in acute, subacute, and, and chronic. And then, of course, that rumen acidosis founder type model is something that we all have some experience with. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how to treat acidosis or laminitis and how to prevent it. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. True Test Group. Weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. I've always had an interest in care for the animals and their well-being. Really what we want to do is work hard to eliminate as much feedlot lameness or beef cattle lameness as possible. How we feed a cow on a daily basis can not only have daily effects, but they can also have long-term effects on claw health, uh, reproductive performance, uh, mammary health, all of those factors as we look at, at the inputs and the response that the animal has to what we feed them. When animals have adequate intake of effective nutrients, we take care of the immune system and performance follows. It's important that the consumers understand our dedication to the well-being of these animals. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices.
Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Matt, thanks for being here today. Folks, this is Dr. Matt Meisner, and he is a uh, boarded internal medicine specialist in the Veterinary Health Center here at Kansas State University, where he is an associate clinical professor. And we've been talking about laminitis in cattle, whether it's beef cattle or, or dairy cattle, we see laminitis, and, and we talk about anatomy, clinical signs, and, and causes. But what are we going to do after they get it? Well, we talked about various forms being acute, subacute, and chronic or subclinicals. And the acute forms are painful. Um, there's swelling. There's a lot of things going on that you treat, uh, in particularly with anti-inflammatories, um, and trying to get on top of those. And actually, uh, if you can get them early enough, um, there's some suggestion that you might be able to uh, give some antihistamines uh, for some of those things. Other steroids and others might actually be detrimental to the treatment. But what you're trying to do is slow the inflammation or improve blood flow um, uh, and figure out what the problem was. So the acute forms and acidosis. So, so what are some of the NSAIDs or, or some of the treatments that you're specifically... We're talking about uh, like the flunix and meglamine. Those so kind banamine. Of banamine. Um, some people would say some aspirins as well. Okay. Uh, uh, and basically just kind of slow some of that and improve blood flow. Antihistamines, there's not a lot available for cattle, but um, there's a few out there uh, that you could do, but those have to be done almost before it starts. Right, because of the antihistamine release. Sure. Um, then, then you mentioned some that might be counterproductive. What are some of sure. those products? Some of the some of the things like actually steroids. So, so dex, dexmethasone. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stresses that go on with this condition anyway, and so that might exacerbate some of that um, in some situations. So, cool. More pain control and support. What about the subacute or subclinical? Well, the subacute ones usually are recognized. Um, there's, there's a lot of times they'll get better on their own, but they might lead to ideas going towards prevention. You know, so those are those are the ones that lead to more ideas on <coughs> metabolic. <laughs> That's the reason why they're called subacute. Right. right? It's because yeah. you don't see them. <laughs> you don't see them, yeah. <laughs> and then the subclinicals either. And uh, the chronic ones, we see hoof growth, so we have to trim their feet, you know, regularly. You know, you'll see young cattle, young growing cattle that had a little laminitis growing and they're a constant problem for the rest of their life where we have to keep their feet trimmed back. And you know, and one of them that, you know, we have to be careful of is in these bull tests. When we're pushing these bulls so hard, not only on the testicular development, right. but we can wind up with, with some laminitis in these bulls and no wheels, no calves. Right, exactly. And, and that's part of my breeding sentinels exam is to look at their feet closely and see, see what kind of stressors we've had. But young growing animals, have a lot of things going on in their feet too, so we have to be careful not to push them too hard. And a lot of times, whether it's laminitis or bloat or acidosis, you know, these are man-made diseases because of us pushing animals with soluble carbohydrate instead of, you know, we don't have this out on pasture. Right. Not, not as common. Right. There not, are, yeah. They're actually, that's another technical thing. It's kind of <laughs> interesting that we've, the things that we've learned in, in decades that some pastures actually are kind of risky, but that still leads to an acidosis. It's kind of interesting. But, but yeah, by, the, by far, the things that we can prevent um, and can see, we should try to, you know, kind of pay attention to them and watch for clinical signs developing. Very cool. After the break, we're going to talk about prevention of laminitis with Dr. Matt Meester. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. The makers of the widely used feedlot cattle supplement Zilpaterol, or Zilmax, have ceased production of that beta agonist product. K-State feedlot nutritionist Chris Reinhardt notes that by turning to the other cattle finishing beta agonist, Optiflex, feedlot operators have moved forward sufficiently. A number of Zilmax users have switched over to the Optiflex, the competing product. The difficult part of implementation, uh, that investment was made almost a decade ago in terms of learning how to use a feed additive such as Zilmax or Optiflex. And so the, the transition from one product to the other, I don't believe, was a huge challenge for anyone involved. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center, and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. 
Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. We were having uh, some conception problems with the cattle, so our local vet came and uh, we took some blood samples and found that some of the donor and recipient females were significantly low in terms of uh, selenium and copper. With the use of multi-men, we were able to increase those levels back to a normal level. We've seen a significant increase in our pregnancy rates on our recipient cattle. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, and Dr. Meisner is an associate clinical professor and boarded internal medicine specialist here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. And we're talking about laminitis, and you know we're talking during the break, and and I just brought up some of my experiences with with feeding cattle in the high plains, and the cattle that we had the the highest prevalence of laminitis on on feeder cattle were the cattle that were there the longest and, and the ones that ate the most at the beginning of the feeding period and were there the longest. So the cattle of Mexican origin, we would have the highest prevalence of, of, of laminitis just due to chronic or long-term exposure to soluble carbohydrate coming in there at 300, 400 pounds and eating like crazy. And then the, the Holstein steers that we fed followed by lightweight beef calves. But those, if I had to pick three groups that I was gonna see laminitis in, It'd be one, two, and three in as far as classes. Sure, yeah, and we see a lot of variation in, in breed risk, um, stage of growth risk, um, time on feed, and so recognizing those potential risk factors is probably the number one start at preventing it. You Absolutely. Know? And so, um, you know, if, if we know we're going to have a problem, we, we predict a problem, then we start looking for the clinical signs we've talked about in er earlier. Um, we start seeing those problems. We look at the feet, then we start looking back as to what we're feeding, um, since a lot of times it is dietary, um, behavioral type problems to prevent it. Um, footing, we didn't even really get on like yep. footing and just overall environment. Um, you know, maybe improving some of those things. And in, in some of the dairy side, we see um, slatted floors and concrete floors and various things that might set up something like this. Sure, just, a, bunks, you know? <clears throat> just a twisting. Right. can disrupt that lamina. Twisting, weight, growth, um, feed bunks, you know, what? Are, how are they getting up there and are they, uh, you know, how, how readily consumable or how, how are they getting to this feed, you know, some of those things. And then we get to some of those other syndromes where we see flaking or stress and we look at some more of the metabolic, the transitional phases or the nutrient phases, you know, whether it be selenium, copper, you name it, you know, we can we can start talking to nutritionists about that. I was going to say, so so really a person needs to get with their veterinarian and nutritionist and, and talk about a plan to prevent this, whether it's on the feed side or or on the, the you know, production side, but also maybe with somebody that's a hoof care specialist. Sure. Yeah, and those guys can be valuable. They're seeing them every day and they can recognize problems. <clears throat> Um, then everybody gets their heads together um, and starts trying to figure out the root of the problem. Seen lots of cases and can translate. Right. Appreciate you being here today. Glad to be here. It's great. Folks, thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. And, and remember, you know, always work with your local practitioner. If you want to know more about what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Or you can find us at the vet school at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks a million for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. 
Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 